I admit when I got home today I was feeling awfully tired when it was time to come I said you got to be kidding me it's already time to go back <laughs> I said God I'm, I'm weary but very quickly came to my mind some words from him he said to me my grace is sufficient for thee <laughs> Because my mind has stayed on him. And all I have to do here is stand. I've never won a soul to the kingdom in my life. He has done everything. Every soul I've ever baptized. It's because of him. So how foolish is it for me. To think somehow tonight depends on me. 
He just needs somebody to stand here. <laughs> he says he will do what the rest. <laughs> I, I, I don't even have to get too deep tonight. He says, I got this. I'll, I'll take care of the saints. So I'm glad to be here in the house of the Lord. Then he reminded me of a song that says, Amazing Grace. <laughs> How sweet the sound <laughs> that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I lift up before you today verses 1 through 6 is where I will begin. 14th chapter of the gospel as recorded by John. As recorded by John. The first few verses are very familiar to you. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And then Jesus makes a strange statement. He says, and whither I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Uh, but then doubting Thomas saith unto him, Lord, talk to us straight. Tell us like it is. We know not whither thou goest. So how can we know the way? Verse 14, chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus saith unto Thomas, I am the way, uh, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I need you to understand just as a prologue to this message that within verse 6 there is a special Greek construct. Uh, when the Bible says unto the Father, uh, the construct that is being used in this particular text is proston patera. Uh, if you would, it's the same construct uh, that gives us understanding tonight. When we look in John chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There is the same Greek, special Greek construct found in John 1 verse 1. In that particular text, it's proston theond. But in our text right here, it's proston patera. This construct just simply means uh, that you are literally in the presence of... Uh, uh, that you are dwelling where the action is uh, uh, to the extent uh, that when Jesus says no man cometh unto the Father except he come through me Jesus is saying to us uh, that he dwells in the presence of the Father <laughs> Jesus says I am the door and if you want to get to the Father, you've got to get through me. Because from the beginning, I was in the presence with the Father. I know him, and he knows me. As a matter of fact, we are one. But Jesus says to the disciples, you know the way to glory. How could these disciples know the way to glory? 
Well, we understand that the disciples walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. They spent time with Jesus. They prayed with Jesus. They hung out on the mountainside with Jesus. They ate dinner with Jesus. They woke up with Jesus. For three and a half years, they spent their every living, breathing moment in the presence of Jesus. Hence, Jesus could say to them, because you know me, you know the way. What am I saying to you that if you want to know the way to glory tonight, um, you've got to understand uh, that you've got to walk with Jesus. Um, you've got to talk with Jesus. Um, you've got to have worship with Jesus. Um, you've got to spend time with Jesus. Um, because once you get to know him, you know your way to glory. Oh, church, uh, young, sometimes we make it real complicated. Uh, but if we believe uh, on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we shall be saved. Uh, there is no doubting about our future or our future mission or direction. Uh, our way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. I have entitled this message for tonight in GPS we trust for the directions to the wedding help me holy ghost in gps we trust for the directions to the wedding i was fortunate a couple of years ago to purchase a gps but today i'm i'm not so much talking about my global positioning satellite, but I'm just using it as a tool to relate to my real satellite, my God positioning satellite. And I need you to understand something because my GPS, because I spend so much time in the car, Traveling back and forth, visiting saints, coming to church, all, all the things we do as ministers. The GPS, I have to admit, has become a close friend of mine. <laughs> I know it's an inanimate object. And it can't always reciprocate my love. <laughs> but indeed, uh, uh, GPS and I have developed a good relationship. And I would let you know, Sister Matt, that... Uh, I only let the British woman on there talk to me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, she's the only one that speaks the correct English. <laughs> yes, but indeed, 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 you'll get that later. Indeed, indeed, the first thing that I do when I get in my car is turn my GPS on. I want you to stay with me now. And then I punch in my secret code. Ellen says, why should the sons of daughters and daughters of God be reluctant to pray? When prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse, where are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence. Without unceasing prayer and diligent watching, we are in danger of growing careless and of deviating from the right path. The adversary seeks continually to obstruct the way to the mercy seat that we may not be earnest, by earnest supplication and faith, obtain grace and power to resist temptation. Oftentimes we have heard the acronym PUSH. Pray until something happens. Uh, and, and, and Paul counsels us to take everything uh, to God in prayer. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. It is his admonition. We are prone to pray about the big things in our life, but we forget to pray about the so-called little things until the little things become big things. <laughs> Talking to God about everything that concerns us and him is the first step toward victory over worry. Yeah. So my secret code to get into glory is found on my knees when I come to God in prayer. Yeah. 
But the second thing that happens is, is that after I punch it in, I tell the GPS where I'm planning on going. The GPS uh, immediately tells me to proceed uh, to the highlighted route. Now, the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In verse 133, it says, Order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. In John 1 verse 1, as we read already, the Bible says, In the beginning, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and I've got to say something to you out there because you've got to understand that in these last days the only thing that you and I will have to stand on is the word of God and I have to confess tonight uh, there are many of you out there uh, that haven't memorized a text in many moons. Uh, and I've got to challenge you because if you don't know any text uh, when persecution comes our way, uh, I don't want you in my cave. Uh, go find another cave uh, because in my cave uh, we will uh, know uh, that he that dwelleth uh, in the secret place uh, of the most high God uh, shall abide uh, under the shadow of the almighty uh, in my cave uh, we will say God uh, is my refuge and strength uh, a very present help uh, in times of trouble uh, so if you can't memorize that uh, that's just your, your initiation to get in. Uh, we will tell you to the left uh, and to the right. Uh, go find yourself another cave. Uh, this cave is on its way to glory. Some of you ain't ready for that time because you don't study God's word. Used to be a time we showed up for 13 Sabbath as kids. We knew all 13 memory verses. Huh? Some of your kids don't know in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's a crying shame. If your children can quote scripture, for you are setting them up for failure when the time comes. Your kids will be a liability when affliction comes. And as we talked about this morning, there's no getting around it. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to suffer affliction. The only thing you can stand on is the word of God. So affliction will build your character. You know, God tells later, see, as we talked about this morning, that he tells them to buy of him gold tried in the fire. We're going to go through Elder Morris the most difficult and the worst persecution Jesus says that it's ever been on the face of the earth. Amen. You and I, us, if we're around, we're going to go through it. Yes. You say, well, why God got to give us the worst? Well, the reason he got to give us the worst is because some of you and I are so messed up that it's going to take a whole lot of persecution to get us right. There's a lot of purifying that he's going to have to do for us before we can go up there. Some of you come to church with that shallow, that superficial mind, uh, still feeding off of baby food, and God's trying to give you some nourishment. You've got to understand that now is the time to learn to stand up on the word of the living God. Proceed to the highlighted route, my GPS tells me. Next thing that I find in terms of my GPS is that God will wake me up and God will give me a car to drive and he starts my engine in life like I start the engine in my car but one thing I found uh, is that Jesus will not open the garage door for me neither will he put the car in reverse 
Stay with me, church. Sometimes in our preaching of righteousness by faith, indeed we understand that we are saved completely by Christ, but the Bible says that faith without works is dead. And you've got to understand that the very desire to do what's right comes from God. So, so if you tell Jesus, uh, I want to worship with you at five in the morning, I guarantee you Jesus will wake you up at five in the morning, but he won't get out the bed for you. Your lazy behind has to roll out by itself. The only thing he guarantees is that he will give you the power and the strength to get out. Yes, 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 yes. All your salvation is in him. But he still gives you the freedom of choice. And unless I put that car in reverse uh, and just leave it started, you know what happens? Uh, I will die from suffocation. Some of you are so spiritually minded uh, that you're of no earthly good uh, because you refuse to share what you have with others. Uh, you're still in the garage uh, and Jesus is telling you put the car in reverse and go tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. And the funny thing about it is, is that there's enough gas to get you started. But eventually the car runs out of gas. Unless you stop at the fill-up station. Help me, Holy Ghost. You've got to understand that the fill-up station is that morning and that afternoon and that evening worship session. When you go to God, you've got to understand that he doesn't serve up any bad gas. Help me, Holy Ghost. When you go to him, there is no unleaded pump at his station. There's no, there's no, 90, no 87 at his station. There's no 91 at his station. He only serves uh, premium gasoline <laughs> that's all he serves and he, there's no self service there's only full service uh, Jesus is waiting at the pump uh, to fill you up and unless you go to Jesus there will be no filling and you will run out of gas uh, and find yourself stranded on the road uh, to your spiritual journey uh, and the only person that can find you then is Jesus some of you have to understand uh, that there is a work that you must do now the work you do doesn't save you no, 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 no. The work you do does not save you. No, 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 no let, me, let me break this down. Let me break this down. Uh, there was a great gentleman that was laid to rest this past Wednesday. Greatest evangelist our church has ever known, in my opinion. And he would teach us in class this analogy. Cleve would say this. He would say an apple tree. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. This is, this is going deep, all right? I'm trying to teach Dr. Denham something. Stay with me, all right? <laughs> an apple tree is not an apple tree because it bears forth apples. Stay with me now. But rather, an apple tree bears forth apples because it is an apple tree. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm going to say it again for you. An apple tree is not an apple tree because it brings forth apples. But rather, an apple tree brings forth apples because it is an apple tree. We don't do good works in order that we might be saved but rather because that's who we are. We can't help but do it. Stay with me, stay with me now. Because when Jesus came here, he said, the devil comes trying to tempt me, but he can't find anything in me. You see, all of us, if you look up your family tree, 
will find a similar pattern of sin. Same sins tend to plague particular families. So if people tend to get divorced in your family, you can find it going all the way up the tree. If the men tend to go to jail, you find it going all the way up the tree. But when Jesus shows up, although, stay with me now, although he is born from Mary, although he is Mary's son, Jesus created Mary. Although he's the son of David, Jesus created David. To the extent that Revelation 22, 16 says that he is the root and the offspring of David. In other words, uh, there has never been a human uh, that God didn't create. Hence, he begs his mother the question, woman, uh, don't you understand that I need to be about my father's business? Uh, I, indeed, Jesus uh, even says to us in John 8, 58, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham ever was, I am. What, 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 what am I saying to you? That when you look at your life, church, and you look at where God has brought you from, you can never forget the one that created you. Because he's the only one that can fix you. And when he shows up on earth, he, although, <laughs> although he is born of Mary, he does not have the sinful desires of Mary. Hence, when the devil comes to tempt him, he can't find anything in him. Stay with me now, because Jesus, in all of this, uh, overcomes the world. And the reason he overcomes the world is because the devil could never get him to sin. So he steps into a body that has been degraded by sin, uh, but he has no desire to sin. Uh, so hence, he overcomes uh, the sinful propensities that are out there in the world. What am I saying? That Jesus has already overcome sin. And that means all you have to do is ask him to come and live within you and the same thing he did 1,978 and six months ago, he says he will do the same thing in you. Next thing my GPS teaches me is that my GPS is always taking me closer to my destination. Sometimes it seems like it's taking me backwards, but it's always taking me closer. And it's the same thing with Jesus. Sometimes we look at our setbacks as Jesus not knowing what he's doing. And sometimes, you know, I, I get mad with the GPS. I said, GPS, why are you taking me this way? I talk to her. Yes, I do. Get over it. Get one. You'll find out. You'll experience it. <laughs> but I talk to her. Yes, I do. Sometimes it's just me and her in the car. She's the only person talking back to me. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> but indeed, indeed, one thing that I have found is that she is always taking me closer to my destination. And even when she takes me on paths that I don't understand, if I just trust her, she'll get me there. Stay with me, church. Because Jesus is about to take us on one of the most difficult paths ever. Matter of fact, he calls it the most difficult path ever. To the extent he says it's so bad that if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. Which means that even those who are sealed would fall if he didn't stop it short. 
But he's got to take us to the brink in order to cleanse us. And all he asks you to do in the process is hold on. That's all you got to do is hold on. Because your faith will give you your victory. The more you hold on to him, the more you are guaranteed to get stronger in Christ and be ready for the times ahead. GPS, another thing I learned from it is that my GPS to this day has been two, almost two and a half years now. My GPS Ella, has never taken the wheel. GPS has never taken the wheel. And I got to challenge some of you because indeed many of us prefer that God would relegate himself to being a backseat driver. We'd rather him be somebody in the back that we could just tell to shut up. You see, you and I have no problem asking Jesus to forgive us of our sins. We like Jesus as a savior. We can't stand him as Lord. We're okay with him washing us clean in the blood of the lamb. But when Jesus tells you to get up and have worship, Lord, I'm tired. God understands. Does not. You told him to wake you up. He woke you up. Now get up. Now stay with me, stay with me now because there's a lot of people here tonight but I can guarantee you on Wednesday night or Tuesday night at prayer meeting there won't be a whole lot. And you've got to understand that Jesus will show up here at 7 or 7.30 for prayer meeting and he's looking for all of you. While you sit home watching American Idol, help me Holy Ghost watching 24 go get a dvr and record it come to church and hear the word of the god sit at home watching uh well the god understand he knows i'm tired what is he going to say to you when persecution comes he's going to say you were too tired to spend time with me now you're not strong enough to endure one of the things I learned from my GPS, my GPS has FM traffic. Stay with me now. And the FM traffic does this. When I'm traveling down the road, if Dr. Denham has an accident up the street, because she was trying to learn some new word for Scrabble, help me Holy Ghost. If she has an accident up the street, <laughs> If she has an accident up the street, my GPS will pick it up and it will reroute me to another direction. Stay with me now. Because when it does that, it just comes on saying, you know, we're rerouting you, uh, you know, and it will show the accident. I'll hit the screen. It will show me the accident. Show me where it is. But it oftentimes gets on my nerves. I'm saying, why is it taking me this way? And what I've learned is that my GPS can see things that I cannot see. And you've got to understand that sometimes in life it seems like you're going the long way. It seems like God tends to drag you the long way sometimes. But if you just hold on, one day in the sweet by and by, he's going to show you all the times when he helps you to avoid the pitfalls of life, where he took you the long way, the scenic route, so that you might get through safely. You've got to learn, church, to trust in God. One of the things, another thing my GPS teaches me is that it takes me in places uh, that I've never been before. <laughs> uh, uh, Psalm chapter 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And the fact of the matter is, is that because he loves me, every now and then uh, he takes me on paths uh, that I've never been before. I got to tell you, in some of the detours I've taken, I didn't even know these neighborhoods existed till the, till the GPS took me down that way. But if you just trust him, uh, you will get to see some things in your life uh, that you have never dreamed of. That's the God you serve. 
Now, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, and this is very important. Stay with me now. Because as I'm driving my GPS, there's a car on my screen. And on my particular path, the path lights up in purple. And what I've noticed is, is that as I travel on this path, on the GPS, as it's going, the car's going up the screen, that the, the road that is behind the car, slowly but surely, disappears off of the screen. You say, what, 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 is, what does that mean? Well, 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 here's what it means. It's that when God has delivered you from your sins, when God finds you in that club and says, child, come on home. I know, I know, I know, I know Ellen says, you know, the angels, uh, you know, they, they, they don't, they, they just can't roll into the clubs. But, but stay with me now, because she never said Jesus can't come in the club. So to stay with me now, because sometimes Jesus uh, finds you uh, in the worst possible place. And he picks you up. And what does he say? He says, thy sins are forgiven thee. <laughs> And I will remember them no more. I cast them into the depths of the sea. Uh, to the extent that your past uh, is forgotten in heaven. Uh, so why are you still holding on to it? Uh, up where it matters, uh, they are not even talking about it. So why are you so focused on it down here? Understand uh, that when God delivers you from something, keep your eyes uh, fixed on on Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the road to salvation. Keep your eyes fixed on him and the guilt and the frustrations of your past uh, will quickly dim and fade. And here's the thing, the only way they return is if you go back to get them. God doesn't bring them up anymore. He tells you to walk in the newness of life. You and I, we oftentimes, we like the old life. You see, sin is an equal opportunity destroyer. We love sin. We love to go back and get it. But here's another thing that I've learned, and that is this. I have learned to trust the GPS when the driving is easy so that I can hear and respond to her voice when things get hectic. If I don't get accustomed to obeying the GPS when I am driving in the secluded country, then I will not be able to obey it in the congested city. And it is obedience that increases faith. Hence, I will lose faith in the GPS and be lost when I need the GPS most. What am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that while things haven't gotten so hectic in our spiritual walk, while it's still an opportunity for you to study your word and understand the things of God, you must take advantage of that opportunity now so that when the fiery trials of persecution come your way, you will be able to recognize the voice of God because you listen to him when things were going well. You can't figure or understand or recognize his voice because when I'm in the country, my GPS says, turn in 10.2 miles. Turn in 15.6 miles. But when I get up inside of Boston, the GPS says, turn left, then turn right. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> turn right, then turn left. <laughs> GPS ain't even got the time to name the street. But I've learned, stay with me now, I've learned that, that when it's time for me to turn on the GPS, 
that that little corner turns white. Help me, Holy Ghost. So that when I get in the white, I know it's time to turn. Jesus tells me today that he washes me white as snow. And if I learn to dwell in the purity of his presence, when things get rough, I won't make the wrong turn because Jesus has already fixed it in my mind and I know where to go in this life. Here's the thing I just learned and realized just the other day. I was leaving a friend's home who I normally visit and it was in the dark of night. And this person maybe lives a good half an hour from me and for whatever reason that night I was not in my car. My wife had my car and I was in the friend's car, uh, one of the elders from my church, and he was, he was driving. And we were leaving his house and it was very dark at night and he was giving me a ride. I think we had just come back from visitation. And, 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 and we were driving. And I said, man, we ain't got no GPS. I feel lost with how to get over it. <laughs> You ought to feel lost when you can sense Jesus. But stay with me. And so he said, man, can you figure it out? I said, I'll try. And here's what I noticed. I noticed that I didn't miss any turns. Every time I need to turn, I say, turn left here. I said, turn right over here. Go a couple of miles, turn left. Turn right. Guided myself right back home. Stay with me. Stay with me now. Stay with me. I have gotten so accustomed mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercy. to listening to her voice come on, come on. Come on. that sometimes I don't even need her direction. I can get there because I'm accustomed to, to following the right path. Stay with me, church. Sometimes you've got to understand that if you trust Jesus and you get to know him well enough, you'll be able to make the right turn even in the darkest times in your life you'll be able to make the right turns you won't lose faith you won't go off path you won't stray and this is the kind of faith that the people of god need as we approach the time of the end this is what we need I got to admit that I'm a sinner saved by grace. Sometimes I get distracted and I miss my turn. There are many distractions in life. Sometimes I am so focused, stay with me, on my situation. I found that. That I'm, when I'm so engrossed in some thoughts about some knuckle-headed board member or some member that's getting on my last nerve. Or when I'm so engrossed in my situation, uh, I stop listening to her and I miss my turn. Stay with me now because sometimes you do the same thing. Uh, when trouble comes your way, uh, you get so focused on your troubles uh, that you forget the one who can lead you out of trouble. Uh, and you've got to understand uh, that even in the midst of your difficulties, keep your eyes uh, fixed on Jesus. Uh, keep your eyes fixed on the Lord. Uh, but when I get distracted, church, uh, and I go down the wrong road, uh, I deter my spiritual growth and retard my progress toward my destination. Uh, I get there later than the initial calculation. Uh, but you know what I found, church? Uh, that there's even grace in the GPS. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, even the GPS has grace, uh, and it's called a recalculating. <laughs> uh, you see, as soon as I go straight, uh, when I should turn, uh, and when I turn when I should go straight, uh, the GPS uh, immediately announces uh, recalculating. Uh, oh, when I fall down in the path of sin, uh, God does not leave me where I am, uh, but echoing from the corridors of heaven, 
I hear the Savior shouting, uh, recalculating. Uh, oh yes, when I find myself back in the club, uh, Jesus says recalculating. Uh, when I find myself stealing, uh, watching the internet, uh, watching adultery, uh, doing premarital intimacy, uh, gossiping, uh, drinking, uh, smoking, uh, talking bad about God's church, uh, watching soap operas, uh, listening to Beyonce, uh, Little Wayne, uh, Jigga, uh, and 49 Cent. Uh, when I find myself uh, in bed with someone uh, that I know that God has delivered me from, uh, from the corridors of glory uh, comes the word, uh, recalculating, uh, recalculating. Uh, God says, uh, I don't throw you back on the curb. Uh, remember, that's where I found you. Uh, that's where I picked you up from. Uh, I'm not going to put you back where I cut you from. Uh, recalculating. Uh, I still uh, got enough grace uh, to carry you to glory. Uh, don't give up. Uh, don't give in. Uh, I've got a home uh, up yonder uh, waiting for you. There is a saying that says, sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. So it's not the time to give up on Jesus because he's trying to take us to a special place. And I got to talk a little bit about that destination before I leave. If you'll permit me, baptismal candidates, just to talk just for a couple of minutes about the place he's taking us to. Because when I read about this place, I experience the hope. Help me, Holy Ghost. When I read about this place, I experience hope. You might not, but I do. I look in Revelation chapter 21. John stranded out there on the Isle of Patmos, uh, a, a prisoner, a coal miner, a, a confined to hard duty. But God gives him a vision in Revelation 21, and John says he saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. I don't know about you, church, but I plan to be at the wedding. I, I, know, I know some of you are not quite focused on it right now, but I've got to understand that when I look at the things that are going on in this world, uh, it's not hard to see that soon and very soon, uh, Jesus is about to come. Uh, soon and very soon, uh, he's about to break the clouds of glory. Uh, and so I'm waiting for the wedding. I know the church is his bride, uh, but apparently he has another bride. He calls it the new Jerusalem, uh, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride uh, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God says he's going to wipe all tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true, and faithful. Uh, he said, I am the Alpha and Omega, uh, the beginning and the end. Uh, I will give unto him uh, that is a thirst of the fountain uh, of the water of life. But stay there with me now, because further on down, in verse 11, the Bible says, having the glory of God has this city, uh, and her light was like unto 
a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Now stay with me now. And had a wall great and high. And there were 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. And the names written on were the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. On the east, there was three gates. On the north, three gates. South, three. And west, three. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now, stay here. Stay here with me, church. Because verse 16 takes me down a different path. Verse 16 takes me down a entirely different path. You see, the Bible says, And the city lieth four square. And the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed. Help me, Holy Ghost. And here's what the city measured. 12,000 furlongs. Mm. And the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Now, we understand that 12 furlongs represents, I should say 12,000 furlongs, represents almost precisely 1,500 miles. Stay with this preacher. I'm about to teach Dr. Denham something, so stay with this preacher. You see, there are different levels to our atmosphere. The first area is what we call the troposphere. It's really from Earth up until about the first four miles up. The next area is the stratosphere. This particular area goes up to about 50 miles up. The next level is the mesosphere. This level is about 50 to 53 miles up. Stay with me now, stay with me, stay with me. When the astronauts are headed into space, they first experience turbulence at about 67 miles up. On re-entry back into Earth, they first experience turbulence at about 75 miles up. So at its highest point, at its highest point, our atmosphere, before we get into outer space where there's satellites and stuff, our atmosphere goes up to about 75 miles. The word of the Lord says that God's city is coming down here to land on earth. We're told she's going to sit down on the old Mount of Olives. Hmm. But, but this city measures 12,000 furlongs or 1,500 miles. But the Bible doesn't stop there. It says that the length and the breadth and the height are all equal. So the city of God is 1,500 miles long. And it's 1,500 miles wide. <laughs> But it's also 1,500 miles tall. What, what am I saying to you? That the majority of the city is in out of space. Help me, Holy Ghost. There's a portion that's inside of earth. But the, but the majority is outside of earth. Why is that? Because now God's dwelling place uh, is on earth. And when all the other worlds uh, want to come and see Jesus, uh, they've got to come to earth. Uh, and in order to find him, they got to know where he is. Uh, and there will be a city uh, 1,500 miles tall uh, where there'll be no mistaking uh, where the master is. Uh, there is a transparent uh, golden city uh, and wherever you look out there 
there. You can't help but see this glistening ball in the distance uh, where dwells the maker of heaven and earth. Uh, and I've got to tell you that I can't wait for this wedding. Uh, you see, this is going to be a glorious wedding. Uh, I can't wait, church, uh, to make it to this wedding. Uh, you see, church, uh, when I get to this wedding, I understand uh, that there will be no more sickness uh, at the wedding. <laughs> there will be no more cancer at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more suffering uh, at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more diabetes uh, at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more heart failure uh, at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more cancer uh, at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more pimples, young people, at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more AIDS uh, or death uh, at the wedding. Uh, but it doesn't stop there, church. You see, I'm also told uh, that there will be no more bills uh, at the wedding. Uh, no more telephone bills uh, at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more Comcast uh, at the wedding. Uh, no more rent and mortgages uh, at the wedding. Uh, there will be no more water bills uh, at the wedding. Uh, no more tuition uh, at the wedding. Uh, no more student loans uh, at the wedding. Uh, no more car notes uh, at the wedding. Uh, no more preachers. Uh, no more preachers. Uh, no more preachers. Uh, Pastor Morris and I uh, will be sitting uh, at the feet of Jesus. Uh, there will be no more preachings uh, up in heaven. Uh, but it doesn't stop there, church, because I understand uh, that some of you are a little vain. Some of you are a little vain. And I know when you get to glory, you're going to be up in glory trying to fix your hairdo while you look in the streets of gold. But you've got to understand that I'm not too concerned about that. You see, when I get to the wedding, I'm not going to be doing all that kind of stuff. Here's what I plan to do. Number one, I plan to sit at the welcome table at the wedding. I plan to sing and never get tired at the wedding. I plan to walk and talk with Jesus at the wedding. I plan to shout hallelujah at the wedding. I plan to put on my long white robe at the wedding. I plan to feast on milk and honey at the wedding. I plan to climb. Now forget that. I'm going to have some wings. I plan to fly to the highest mountain at the wedding. And this is all because uh, of the man we call Jesus. Uh, the man uh, who calms the seas uh, and calms the storms in your life. Uh, his name uh, is Jesus. Uh, and I want to recommend him to you tonight. Uh, he is my deliverer. Uh, he is the Alpha and Omega. Uh, he is the beginning uh, and the end. Uh, he is the Lion uh, of the tribe of Judah. Uh, he is the of 10,000. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the joy of my salvation. He wakes me up in the morning. He feeds me. He clothes me. He sets me on his way. Why? Because his name is Jesus. And Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he washed me. He washed me. He washed me. He washed me. Why does What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs he bears. If we would but learn to take everything, church, everything to God in prayer. Quit meandering and pandering in the morning hours. Get 
get up and say, Jesus, all to thee I surrender. All to thee I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. Oh, do you know him today? Has he come by your house today? Have you experienced the love of Jesus today? Jesus is the reason we have five baptisms tonight. It's because of Jesus and the blood that flows from Calvary's cross that five souls are going into the watery grave of baptism. And you've got to understand, candidates, that up in glory, there are five whole new parties starting just for you. And we get to be a part of them all. So in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, God commands you today to be thou clean, be thou whole, go and sin no more. Who says amen to the word of God today? Today there's somebody here that needs a savior. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. You've heard, you've heard the joyful sound today. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Oh, hallelujah tonight. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Today, man, woman, boy, and girl, under the sound of my voice, if you tonight, if you tonight want to get to know the man we call Jesus, if you want to know him so well, that he immediately recognizes you when it's time to go home. Then I just want you to stand wherever you are. Just stand, just stand for Jesus. You wanna to get to know Jesus so well that when he comes, you're ready to go home. Just stand wherever you are. You wanna to get to know him that well when he comes, you're just ready to go home. Just stand wherever you are. Stand for Jesus. Stand for Jesus. Give your best to Jesus. Stand for Jesus. You can come forward. That's okay too. Those of you standing, come forward. Come on down here and meet Jesus down here. There are some people that need a savior today. And there are many of you standing that they need that encouragement from. So those of you that have stood, just come on down here to the front. Come on down here to the front. And, and, and let's pray to Jesus. That from this day forward, we won't let anything get in our way. But we will get to know him for ourselves. We'll give of our best to him. And we won't stop until we see him face to face. If that's you, just come down. Come to down. As my brother sings a song. Joyful song. Yes. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings. And do it all around. He saves. Hallelujah. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps across the way. Yes, sir. Onward tis my Lord's command. Jesus says. And he says. Yes, he does. Jesus says. Hold somebody's hand next to you. Hold somebody's hand next to you. Hold somebody's hand. Let us pray together. Spirit of the living God. Lord, how good and how pleasant it has been to dwell in your presence. We thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the power of your word. But right now, Lord, there are some sinners who have come to the mercy seat to be forgiven, to be transformed, 
to be renewed, uh, to be recreated, to, to be regenerated, uh, to be changed from within. And only you can do that, Jesus. Only you can fix us from the inside. So we beg of thee to fall afresh. Let even a little of that latter rain, Lord, fall afresh on us. That we might be changed from glory to glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord, we come to you tonight wanting to be fixed. Wanting to be transformed. Disappoint us not, Lord. When we leave here, the devil is going to be angry. And he's going to test us on every turn. But help us to never let go of our faith in Jesus Christ. Help us to hold on until we see you coming in the clouds of glory. Help us to grasp the hand of faith tonight. And when all is said and done, we will bless your name, Lord. When it's all said and done, we will sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. When it's all said and done, we will walk on streets of gold. When it's all said and done, we will eat from the tree of life. When it's all said and done, we will sit at the feet of Jesus. All because of the work that you have begun in us today. We bless your name. We praise you. We give you the glory. We say amen. We say praise the Lord. We say hallelujah. We say thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen and amen. Hug somebody next to you. Tell them you love them. And tell them you can't wait to see them in the kingdom. God bless you. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me.